Good day to you all, it's Mike here on my 64 and for this video I'd like to talk about my experiences at EGX London 2022. Now I recently went to uh, London uh, last weekend from recording this video and it's the first chance I've had to actually, you know, um, talk about it because uh, job stuff, life stuff keeps getting in the way. Um, so I recently got to go there and it was fantastic to just, you know, go to these events. I do love going to video game events, uh, not just for the games, but for the people that you meet at these events too. Uh, I went there with my mum, my brother and my sister. We all went on different days, but I went with them on each day. Uh, it was good for my mum because it was one of the first video game events that she's ever been to. Uh, she was going to go to EGX Res 4, Mike Tender 64. Uh, back in 2022, but then, uh, something happened. Uh, maybe you've heard of it. COVID! <coughs> <coughs> oh. Um, that's not me having COVID, it's just... <laughs> I have tested myself, I'm fine. Um, so she was going to go to EGX Res, and then obviously, you know, that happened, and then, um... She couldn't go, so she was really thrilled to be able to go this time around. So we did. Uh, we had a very lovely time, and uh, she was most thrilled about getting swag, free stuff. Uh, and pretty much she was pilfering absolutely anything she could get her hands on. I mean, it was definitely a pirate's life for her, that's for sure. And I was saying to her, Mum, you do know you have to actually play these games. You can't just take the stuff. Because, uh, you know, the developers and that, they've gone through a lot of time, you know, making these games and then getting, you know, the booths and all that set up and all this, uh, you know, promotional material as well to help, you know, try to sell their game. Uh, so the least we could do is actually play their games before you rob them blind. Uh, so we eventually came up with, I would play the game games whilst my mum was taking stuff badges bookmarks stickers fidget spinners uh you name it it was there my mum would have it <laughs> uh but we did play some games there she did play some games and um we went to the retro zone and she played space invaders 2 on an arcade cabinet and she was really really thrilled with that but that brought back a lot of you know like childhood memories and stuff like that and then as we went around like the indie area, there was VR and there's a game called Space Salvage. So she's gone from uh, Space Invaders being an 8-bit arcade game to Space Salvage, which is like a 3D VR game. Uh, very, very immersive. And it was just fun seeing my mum go from like both of these games and like putting on the VR with the hands like, oh, wow, look at this. This is amazing. It's like a whole new world. <laughs> it's just brilliant to see and the, the smile on her face as well. Uh, so that was that day, uh, then we finished up with going on the uh, cable car around London, obviously that's not EGX related, but you know, we, she's done EGX for me, and wanted to go in the cable car, so we did, we're both scared of heights, but you know, we got up there, we did it, we met, um, we was on the car with another person who attended GGX, so we just passed the time talking about video games and stuff like that, and he was talking about how he lived in that area, and was taking the cable car to get home, so that was very, very nice, and uh, it just just past the time and then looking out the windows and then all of a sudden you're not thinking about, oh my God, this is high. You're thinking, oh wow, look at that. I can see the O2 arena. Oh wow, look at that. So it was a, a nice experience. Um, and after, you know, flying in to the UK from Spain, it's like, how can I be, you know, totally scared of heights uh, when I've just flown in over, you know, several countries to get to the UK, you know, Spain, France, then the UK. Uh, and then I'm going to, you know, start bricking it on a cable car. Well, it is what it is. But, uh, you know, it was fun. And thank you, Mum, for the experience. Uh, then on the Saturday, the whole reason, the whole motive, the whole objective of me wanting to go to EGX this year, this was the thing. This was the big thing. And it was the 25th anniversary GoldenEye 007 Meet the Devs panel at EGX uh, with Martin Hollis and Brett Jones, who were the uh, creative director and the lead artist, I believe, on the game GoldenEye 007 for the Nintendo 64. Uh, so I really, really wanted to, you know, see it, listen to it, see these guys, you know, talking about the games that they created 25 years ago. Um, now, I didn't know this before, uh, so I thought, you know, well, I knew of the event, I knew didn't know what was going to happen afterwards. So I thought, oh, I'd really, really know these guys being in attendance and knowing that Nintendo Switch Online is going to get GoldenEye 007 soon, when we don't know but soon um and also on the uh, xbox game pass we did our very own mock-up of the uh, golden 007 uh on nintendo switch so basically this is the nintendo 64 art 
right, for the box, but we've gave it a Nintendo Switch feel. So obviously, you know, we've got the Nintendo Switch logo in now. The writing I've put that way. Now, the reason why it's this way, if you may have noticed on most games on Nintendo Switch, for example, like with Animal Crossing, the writing is actually the other way. So um, if I put them together, saying that the Switch logos there and there, right? They go together. You'll see one is written one way and one is written the other. Now, and also the logos don't match up. Now, the reason I did that, did that is because when you display the game and you see it from the top, you'll be able to read the writing. Now, on this, you don't display it sideways, do you? You know, you display it in portrait, not landscape. But this is because it's landscape. And if you display it anywhere and you see the writing along on the top, you'll be able to see it say GoldenEye 007. But I was clever in doing, by putting the logos the other way, that the writing will line up if you was to display it sideways, the writing is still going to be uh, the way it should be. Now, because they were going to be there and I got this made up and mocked up and I wanted them to sign it, I even went and to you know, Amazon to pick up some uh, pens, uh, autograph pens, and I had wanted a gold one so they could write it in the golden eye box with a gold pen. And then I promptly left them at home and I didn't realise that until we was on the train going all the way up to like West Ham and then off to the thing. It's like, oh my God, we forgot the pens. <laughs> oh, and I felt devastated about it because I thought, you know, now we're going to be able to get them to sign it and I've got to try and find a normal pen for them to sign. Because uh, good luck trying to find a gold one. Fortunately, like I said, I didn't know this before, they were going to do a signing afterwards anyway. And I thought, yes, at least they'll be able to sign it. They'll have a pen to do it. And on top of it, they had a gold pen. And I thought, brilliant that's exactly what i wanted so they've actually uh signed the inside for me as you can see i've put the interior artwork i've gone with like the pull screen uh and then so they had plenty of space inside to write their you know autographs in now also got a little picture as well from the instax mini printer that i had i took with me to the event and there's me and jack with uh martin and brett there as well Look at that. So there's a little memento. Now, there was supposed to be four of them. There's supposed to be another two in attendance, uh, including Graham Norgate, who's one of the composers. Um, but unfortunately, he got caught up in a train delay in Leicester or something, and they weren't able to attend, uh, which is a great shame. But, you know, Martin and Brett, they did a fantastic job anyway, sharing plenty of anecdotes uh, and their experiences of, you know, working on the game uh, from the little farmhouse in Tycross. So, uh, you know, it was really, really good to listen to. And if you want to watch and listen to that, we do actually have it recorded on our YouTube channel as well. I'll provide a link in the description below uh, if, you, if you want to watch it or listen to it. Please do. Um... Then um, there was another two uh, rare alumni that was in attendance at the event and we just kept missing them. Uh, it was Kev Bayliss, who was another artist at Rare, and uh, David Wise, who's a composer from like, they did like the Donkey Kong games and the Donkey Kong Country games and that. Um, so it was a shame that I'd missed them as well, um, which was really weird for EGX because uh, it being, it's not a huge, huge place, but there's so much going on and it was very, very easy to just bump into people willy-nilly and you think oh hey how are you how's it going fantastic you know talking to each other that people that we met on twitter and you know social media and that and then people that you're actively searching for and not be able to see them um that was interesting <laughs> So the likes of, you know, like I said, Kev Bayliss, uh, David Wise, uh, also John Cartwright, who used to be on Game Explained, Nintendo Life, he's now on Good Vibes Gaming or gone back to Good Vibes Gaming. It would have been nice to have seen him. I know he was there. I uh, saw all the pictures on Twitter and stuff like that, but it's like, ah, missed him. But never mind, this stuff happens. Uh, on the Saturday as well, friends of ours, uh, Dotty, McFooty, Sib, uh, they were playing the Splatoon 3 tourney that was at the event uh, at EGX and they had a chance to play up against uh, Nintendo Life, uh, against, uh, yeah, yeah, the face that we see, the lovely hostess of Nintendo Life, the hello lovely people, it's Alex from Nintendo Life here. Uh, yes, that guy, that Alex. He was there. Uh, he was there with his partner, Sasha. There was Gemma as well, the social manager. And there's another one whose name escapes me. And I'm so, so sorry. If you're watching this, I'm very, very sorry. Please just put your name in the comments and say, it's me. 
hey! <laughs> you don't have to say it like I just said it. You can say, hey, yo, it's me, you know. I wasn't, you know, trying to put on a voice or whatever to say, hey, yo, everybody, it's me, huh? Um, I do that when I get nervous and excited. I'm sorry, I do apologise. Uh, so to watching our friends, you know, watching our friends on the uh, community stage, you know, playing against the, the likes of Nintendo Life uh, and then thrashing them as well. They did an absolutely fantastic job and our friends won and it was incredible to see. And Elliot, who was the MC and the, the commentator, uh, did a fantastic job, you know, with animating the crowd, you know, getting them going, getting them riled, you know, cheering for the good guys, booing the bad guys and all that stuff. It was fantastic. Brilliant energy. Uh, also a great thing, well, we also met up with the cross players, so Justin, uh, Benji and all the other guys as well. It was very nice to meet them because we've always, you know, like interacted on Twitter every now and again, but never actually like, met in person. So this was a first for us. Uh, we also met Gorney and Rich. So uh, Gorney, Jack Gorney is of uh, Nintendo Village. He also has his own YouTube channel as well. And Rich is from Nintendo Players UK. Um, I met Jack at my first EGX back in 2019. He was in attendance. We actually attended the uh, ukulele panel together. And then Rich I met in WASD uh, back in April of this year. Uh, so, you know, being able to meet up with them again with a bit more time on our hands as well, actively, you know, getting together to meet. Whereas before it was almost like spur of the moment. Oh, hey, hi, how are you? Shake hands. Oh, yeah, it's great to, you know, finally meet you. Did it. Oh, I've got to go. I've got to go. So this time, you know, we finally had time to, you know, hang out with each other, share a pint together. Obviously, we all had our own pints. Uh, we didn't just have one pint with four straws in it. That would have been a bit weird. <laughs> no, the price is at EGX. We should have done that. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh, but no, it was good. It was great fun. Uh, you know, being able to talk to them, talking with them, you know, just hashing it out and just spending time with people that, you know, that we've known for ages on Twitter, but never, you know, very rarely see in person i mean it doesn't help that i live in spain and most of the people that i interact with that live in the uk so you know events like egx and was give me great opportunities to you know see my friends again and hang out with them uh so that was that and like i said about the cross players as well we like justin and benji and the rest of the guys they were doing their uh, podcast thing and they were asking people like desert island disc kind of thing uh you got if you were stuck on a desert island, what three things would you take with you? What video game? What food? What drink? So Jack and I participated. We did it together. Um, you know, it was a lot of fun, you know, being on their podcast for a change. And, you know, just that was the Saturday. And then on Sunday, I'll get to hang out with my sister, her partner and their friends and actually play some games as well. Saturday just flew by us so fast, obviously, you know, with the panel. Uh, the Splatoon finals at the end uh, and then just going around and just all this stuff and then just didn't really play many games to be honest so on the Sunday we made up for it first thing I did was sign up for the Splatoon tourney just to do it really rather than anything else uh, I shanghaied my sister and her friends who are active COD players anyway and, my, and they play Fortnite as well and my sister plays a lot of Fortnite so I uh, thought it'd give them uh, an interesting perspective because obviously, you know, a lot of COD players, they probably look at Splatoon and Splatoon 3 and think, eh, that's a kid's game. Eh, you just go around, you know, painting and maybe occasionally splat someone. Eh, it's not COD. It's not real. It's not, you know, proper game, you know, get into it, get stuck in. But even though we did lose, <laughs> just goes to show, I mean, you can be an absolute pro. Oh, sorry. It just goes to show that you can be an absolute pro in, you know, Call of Duty and stuff like that. But when it comes to another game like Splatoon, where they change the strategy, where it's not just trying to splat the other players over and over again, you do have to try and collect, you know, gain as much turf as possible. You know, they did come away with it, even though we lost. They came away with a new found respect for the game or for the series in general. Whether they go out and buy it uh, now and start playing it on Switch is a different story. But, you know, they come away and think, hey, this has actually got, you know, a lot more. It's a lot more in depth than what they, you know, you wouldn't initially think of it. So that was good. Uh, I went to the Super Rare Games uh, 
booth there as well. They were up in the merchandise area because obviously they have games on sale as well. So that's why they were in the merchandise area. Uh, and made, managed to play some of the games that they've got coming to, you know, consoles and Nintendo Switch and that. So there was uh, Lone Ruin, Ocho, The Gecko Gods and Post Void. Now Post Void I did see at WASD before and, our, you know, it's constantly on our social media and that as well uh, because they send us the press releases and, you know, the trailers and stuff like that. And um, while I saw it was Waz, I wasn't overly thrilled with it because by the like general like, art aesthetic of it, uh, it did look a bit weird to me uh, because you're like holding this vial with like this veiny hand, and then you got like this like needle looking gun in the other hand. It looks like a needle gun. It's not. It's supposed to be a pistol with a magazine in the top, but it looks like a needle gun. So it just looks like you're a junkie trying to you know shoot yourself up basically rather than shoot up the the enemies um but actually you know playing it it does feel really really fun and you know really engaging you just go around you just, just got to shoot the enemies and you've got to try and get to the end of the level as quickly as possible uh before your vial runs out of uh, life essence or life juice uh, so if you shoot enemies, you know, they will die and then their essence will go into the vial and you have to get to the end as quickly as possible. If they shoot you, you take damage, you die. If the vial runs out of life essence, it'll go three, two, one, you'll die. Uh, so that was very, very good. Very, very uh, like fast paced kind of action. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the film like Crank. Now, uh, Crank is a film that came out with Jason Statham. He's an assassin or a hitman who gets injected by some venom or whatever that tries to stop his heart. So it has to keep his adrenaline going to, um, you know, to find out why, find the antidote and save himself. Um, but this is what it kind of felt like. You this fast paced. You have to try and get to the end as quickly as possible, you know, shoot the enemies and it's very, very fast paced. And it just felt like Crank on Crack. That's the general vibe that I got from the game. Uh, another game that I played there was Sonic Frontiers. Uh, I'm in two minds about Sonic Frontiers. Now I know this is the next big Sonic game. And there are a lot of people that really, really want this to be, you know, the pinnacle that, you know, just... This is what brings the series back on top form. Now, I've played Sonic games in the past. I'm more of like the 2D kind of games rather than like the 3D games. Uh, I think the last one I played was Sonic Mania. I do have Sonic Colors down there in my Switch collection, which I've only played a little bit and just not played since. There's just so many games coming out. This is the problem. So many games, and then you get stuck into a game that you just really, really, really enjoy, and then you just knock it out. Sonic Blade Chronicles, for example. Sonic Blade Chronicles 3 just took up my life for a while when that came out. I think I invested a good 120 hours into it. I know there's people that's put in a hell of a lot more. Um, and then there's other games as well that come out, and then there's just so much, so many games, just such little time. But anyway, Sonic Frontiers, so obviously it starts off in the demo, it was an Xbox demo I was playing, or a PC demo with an Xbox controller. Uh, it's almost like an open world-esque kind of thing, like the main area. Uh, there was this voice that says to you as you start the demo, this disembodied voice that says, oh, you're the first one to escape cyberspace. Uh, and then basically the objective of the game is that Sonic has to go back into cyberspace to try and save his friends. So it's like these two worlds colliding kind of thing. So in this one world, or the main world, the hub world, open world, however you want to you know, uh, think of it, uh, basically, Sonic can go around, move around, explore, collect things, find uh, items to unlock gates that will take him to these other levels or cyberspace levels uh, where you'll get more like a conventional Sonic gameplay where you have to run really, really, really fast, collect the rings, defeat the enemies, take different routes and stuff like that. So it's like these kind of like, like two different like game es gameplay aspects put into one game. You can attack enemies with a homing attack, so that, you know if you've got them on the screen, a reticle will appear on the enemy, and you just hit the homing attack button, and Sonic will just bounce off of enemies. If there's multiple enemies, it will hit them all, um, and if there's one enemy, where you can just keep hitting him multiple times and stuff like that. Um, it's not a game that I'm probably going to pick up uh, day one. I do want to hold out a little bit more. Maybe when um, other people uh, start playing the game, maybe smaller YouTubers. Uh, mainly, I'm more interested in seeing what smaller YouTubers will probably say about the game or just seeing gameplay of it rather than the big ones because obviously huge sites, they can feel biased. Even though they're probably not being biased, they're perfectly, you know, uh, just in what they're saying. If you're a huge Sonic fan, you're going to say, oh, this is a fantastic Sonic game, blah, blah, blah. And then you're going to feel like, hmm, maybe this was paid off. And it's not always the case. A lot of these big sites, even though they have writers writing for them, some of them, they just do it for the games. 
you know, just having the opportunity to write about these games. If I get paid for it, necessarily. Some people, yes. Not a lot. Uh, and especially for, like, medium sites. I don't get paid to write games. I may get paid a little bit from the website for advertising that I have on the website, but it's not like developers come up to me or publishers saying, here, I want you to write a review about my game. Here's 500 squids. No, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. It's like, oh, we'd really like you to cover our game. Could you do that for us? And we go, yes, that's it. Uh, so I'd like to see like a smaller peop uh, smaller YouTubers' opinions and stuff like that. Because like I said about your yeah, bigger ones, it can be a little bit biased maybe. It'll be either, oh, it's really, really, really good. It's fantastic. This is the pinnacle of uh, you know Sonic games. Or they'll go, oh, this is absolute trash. It's too much open area, not enough water, you know. All that kind of stuff. So, you know, it can be hit and miss. So I'll just keep an eye out for, like, general, you know, gameplay and stuff. Uh, and then just see if it clicks with me. And if it clicks with me, well, then fantastic. If not, well, no loss. Sorry, Sonic. Better luck next time, maybe. Um, so that was pretty much it. I mean, now, Wolong was also there. That's the game from Team Ninja and Koei Tecmo. That was uh, being shown for the first time in, uh, like, the UK and that. Uh, and it must have been a very, very, you know, apt name for the game because even though it's only come to like PS5 and maybe Xbox S and Xbox Series X, S, that kind of thing, um, it's not coming to Nintendo Switch. Maybe, sometime down the line. Um, but there was no way we was going to wait like two or three hours in the queue. It went all the way around the huge cubicle. It was like a square booth. Uh, so you couldn't really see on the inside. It was like, like walled off. But the queue went all the way round, which is apt because the game is called Whoa Long. And, you know, all you could think about is when you saw the queue was, whoa, that's long. <laughs> so we didn't play that game, unfortunately. But um, it did look good from what we saw from like, the gameplay and stuff all peeking in through like, the doorway that they had to see what people were playing. So that was cool. Um, as for merchandise... There was a lot of merchandise there, all sorts of merchandise, figures, t-shirts, plushies, Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, other kind of cards, cable guy figure things. What did interest me was that Numskulls wasn't there. Uh, mind you, I don't think Numskull was at the last one either. Now, Numskull, if you may have already seen my hat, this is actually from 2019. I picked this up from 2019, and it's actually from Numskull. They did all the merchandise then. Um... But I didn't see them there this year. I didn't see them there last year, I don't think. Uh, which is a shame because I know that they have like the Doom Eternal merchandise. So I was hoping to pick up a couple of the figures there. Because uh, I do have a friend who really, really likes Doom and Doom Eternal. So it would have been cool to get the Doom Slayer. But they weren't there, so... <clears throat> shame. Fail. <laughs> but... But uh, they did have loads of these like anime figures and some of them I was mm, a little bit familiar with. I saw some names like My Hero Academy, Academia, probably saying that wrong, I do apologise. Uh, One Piece or Sword Art Online, that kind of stuff I'm generally vaguely familiar with. I don't see it, I don't watch it, I don't play it personally. But I do have friends that are, you know, fans of them series. So I know from like association. And then there were others that I didn't have a clue of. I mean, they did look good. They did look very, very nice. But then having to try and convince my partner when I come home, let alone, you know, having only a small suitcase to bring this in, in with, back to Spain with me. And then trying to convince my partner to have all these lustrous ladies with all their, you know, their body parts, provocative body type parts all on display. Um, I feel like I would probably be in the doghouse for the rest of my life. Uh, and that's being positive if that's on the good side i mean i could be found in a ditch somewhere <laughs> um but one thing i did like and i did we both agreed on it was fine uh was this little fella it's the uh, pikachu from the pokemon world uh championships that were held in london earlier this year in august over the summer and I saw the design and I loved it. And I thought, oh, it's such a shame I couldn't get to the event myself. Because obviously, you know, I can't just fly, jump on a plane and fly willy-nilly whenever I feel like it. I do have a uh, full-time day job that I have to do. Uh, my brother couldn't get to the event either. He has a full-time job as well. So it's just one of those things like, we're going to have to miss it. Because we've been to WASD earlier in the year. We also, uh, he's gone to Comic-Con a couple of times as well. And it's just like, you know, all these things happening at once. Can't get to them all. We just cannot get to them all. 
unfortunately. So I saw this little guy there and I thought, do you know what? I just had to get him. And I know it seems really, really sad. A grown ass man, you know, just gushing over a plushie. But it's Pikachu. Look at him. Look at that little outfit. And I did like the design with the uh, beef eater one with a little um, Busby that he had on top. Fuzby, Busby. I can't. Fuzby, Fuzby, yes. Busby's the other video game character, isn't it? The Fuzby, sorry, the, the hat, the big fuzzy hat. Uh, so I saw that and I just thought, yeah, I just had to pick him up and get it. And even though I wasn't at the event myself, at least, you know, I got something that probably was. So very good stuff. And I think that pretty much summarised everything that I wanted to say. One final note that I did want to end on and touch upon, and mainly um, it didn't affect me personally, but because it affected friends of mine who were in attendance at the event, um, I thought, you know, uh, because I have the platform, this platform that I can, you know, express my thoughts on, and I wanted to share some of their thoughts as well so that, you know, event organisers going forward can take these into account and consideration. Uh, not just EGX, but, you know, video game conventions and events and stuff like that, or, you know, any kind of big event in general on a whole. Uh, mainly accessibility options. I mean, well able people like myself, okay, we're probably completely oblivious to this kind of stuff. But, you know, those who do have disabilities, um, you know, it's more taxing on them, these kind of events. Um, especially, you know, when they're very, very loud. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, not everybody can play the games with the controllers that they have. Uh, so, you know, maybe some accessibility options. I did see at one of the booths, but that was mainly just a booth for accessibility. It had like the X xbox accessibility uh controller which i thought was very very good to have at the event that was the only thing that i thought you know yeah okay there was something but obviously you know that isn't enough uh so maybe to have more options maybe even possibly having a corner or an, an area dedicated to more accessibility options so people have the opportunity or you know disabled people have the opportunity to be able to play these games in a bit more of a con uh, in, in 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 a safer space or you know a bit more accepting space uh, because a lot of the booths now some areas you know they were quite area the careers area for example that was a lot more open people could get around easier enough but those who are in attendance in a mobility scooter or in a wheelchair yeah they could get around there more or less more or less but in the other areas they were very very tightly packed and you know if there was only a couple of people yeah you could get through but a lot of the times it was full of people and you could not get through at all and it makes getting you know getting to places where to you enjoy these games a lot bit more difficult um the community area as well the community stage obviously it was in an open area right next to like where all the merchandise stands and stuff like that is and you've got people there that are playing their own music there's lots of noise there's lots of people talking there's commotion and stuff like that so it's harder for those that are a bit hard of hearing uh, to listen to what's going on on the stage so maybe you know a bit more accessibility options like for example the panels they were all done in a like sectioned off area so in a lot more quieter area so as you move further up to uh, egx there was an area where they had all like the ball games and stuff like that as well so people were playing the likes of like dungeons and dragons and other kinds of like ball games and stuff and card games as well uh so in that got like, called an off area when we listened to like the GoldenEye panel and they were doing um, the Dark Room with uh, John Robertson and, and stuff like that there. Uh, I think that probably would have been a better place to have had also the community stage as well. So it wasn't getting all that commotion all the time from the stands because it was just in such close proximity. Now, people who are, you know, easy of hearing and stuff like that is not going to affect them maybe too much. But for those who may have, you know, dis difficulties or disabilities or stuff like that and everything or even anxiety as well, you know, it's just a lot of overwhelming emotion uh, a lot of the times. And as someone who has issues with anxiety as well, I've not been diagnosed, but, you know, there are moments where things just come on top of you and you're just trying to process all this emotion, all this information coming at you at once. It can be very, very overwhelming. So though I'm not 
diagnosed. It's not like I've been to a doctor and said, hey, yeah, you got this. Why don't you take some tablets and you'll be fine? No, but um, obviously I have it on a smaller scale, but I do have experienced it to a degree. So I can only imagine what other people who do fully suffer from things like anxiety and other, you know, uh, disabilities or mental health um, issues and stuff like that. And seeing as these events as well, you know, they're all about, you know, being accepting and accepting people of all walks of life and all those that are as well as able people or less able and stuff like that. It's important that, you know, we can all enjoy these uh, events, you know, as a whole, all go there, have absolutely amazing memories that we can take home with us and think that was fantastic and remember them for years to come. So hopefully with the likes of you, Read Pop and other video game events as you go forward, more accessibility options for, you know, people as well. Be more welcoming. I know you do a lot for what you can as well. So, you know, if you can do a little bit more, that would be, you know, fantastic. Okay. So thank you very much for everyone for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video and like to see more of our content, then please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, MikeTendo64. Uh, you can also stay up to date with all our latest news, reviews, personal views, giveaways, and so much more at www.MikeTendo64.com. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and we're also on Tumblr as well. And until next time, keep on gaming.